Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Well, the road starts here for the Boise State men's basketball team, UD Arena, Dayton, Ohio. The stage is set. Will tonight be the night that Boise State makes history? Man, I know you guys sure would like to uh, like that to happen. BJ Reigns with you live in Dayton, Ohio. We got John Mallory, host of Prater in the ball game. You can hear him three to six weekdays on KTIK. It is game day. We are about uh, 10 hours from tip-off, and uh, Johnny, it could be a historic day for Boise State and its program today. Thanks for having me, BJ. One of the, what, 10 biggest moments in Boise State men's basketball history, one of the 10 biggest games right in front of us, obviously this being the 10th opportunity Boise State's had in this tournament, but it, it could vault up to an easy number one. If they win tonight, it'll be the greatest, grandest, biggest, most cherished moment this basketball program has ever had. And um, I think this fan base would love to be able to celebrate that with them if they get this tonight. But obviously a lot to talk about. Thanks again for having me on. I woke up, BJ. Usually I don't wake up with March Madness fever until the opening Thursday, right? And I'm sure you're the same way. But mm -hmm. when the team you cover is playing in a playing game and you know you're following that game, as much as any other in the tournament, you kind of wake up with March Madness fever on a Wednesday. So I'm excited to get this thing going. 
This journey, Johnny, started all the way back in Canada, back in July. Bronco Nation News on the trip to Canada. And you see, uh, oh, about uh, nine months later, the journey of this team. Who would have thought, standing there in Vancouver, Canada, that uh, they would reach this point? Everybody thought they would. And now here they are uh, wow. on this day, a chance to make history, Johnny. It's been a heck of a season for this team. 32 games in the books. I have been at 31 of them and uh, super excited to be here to watch this game tonight, Johnny. And uh, yeah. again, we saw Colorado State last night get that first win in the NCAA tournament for the Mountain West Conference this year. The Broncos had their practice on the floor yesterday, got this team picture, and they'll be ready to go here uh, this evening. Uh, you mentioned March Madness, the feel, the theme, Johnny. I mean, it, it's uh, it's true. It's real. It, uh, you know, Folks want to debate whether or not this is the first four game counts as a real game and things like that, but you get in that arena, you see the feel, the court. It, it certainly feels like and is technically a, a game in March Madness, and so super excited to for, for tonight and for this program, and as you said, one of the biggest games in program history. Colorado is certainly going to be a, a tough opponent, Johnny, but uh, you know, I know the first four, I think some people are still a little disappointed from that, but I think the Broncos are, are using that as motivation. They seem fired up yesterday. Uh, they seem focused. They seemed ready to go, so I think we're past the uh, you know dwelling on the seating and things like that, and you still have a chance to to go out tonight and make history. And this this probably is the type of team they would have played, Johnny, in a seven ten yeah. game or an eight nine game. Uh, you didn't think it would happen in the first four, uh, but it's uh, the type of game that uh, you probably expected Boise State to have to kick off the tournament. And uh, here we go, as Leon Rice says, time to let the fur fly. You you knew that it would be a really tough opponent, but you just didn't think it would be in Dayton. Totally get all that, and and yeah, I'm past that too, man. It's game day, right? I mean, and BJ, think of the eyeballs on this thing tonight everybody is jonesing for tip off thursday right when the the tournament gets going in that form right or really gets going how 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 people feel um and then tonight people are just gonna be itching like okay there's a game on what you what, what else are you watching spring training baseball regular season hockey or nba they're in the dog days of their season right now as you know Dude, you're watching this game tonight. You're watching Boise State versus Colorado, two legit teams, um, two teams that have had good seasons. Colorado, I mean, gosh, how hot have they been the last 10 or so games? They've really flipped this. They underachieved massively for 70% of their season, and they flipped it, and they turned it on, and they're playing their best ball. A lot of eyeballs tonight. Like, if something's going to happen and there's a max takeover or something, hopefully that doesn't have to happen, but there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on this game and uh it's a it's a coin flip for me bj this thing can go any way and uh i can't I, when's tip off right i want to get this thing going about 10 hours from now a uh, programming note we are not allowed to do our pregame show live from inside the arena so we have scheduled a special edition of the lithia florida boise pregame show it will be a couple hours after this show ends johnny at noon mountain time uh, i will be live from the team hotel over at the marriott jeremiah dickey cody goggler abe jackson some special guests scheduled to join us live i've got full interviews with uh, that i did yesterday with the play-by-play -play man spiro didis uh, and I talked to uh, Gary Parrish. Uh, if you guys are a college basketball fan, Gary Parrish does an outstanding job. CBS Sports Network at halftime and post game. A lot of those Mountain West games does a great podcast with Matt Norlander. I on college basketball podcast. Uh, I asked, uh, I interviewed him yesterday. I'm going to play it on the pregame show, Johnny. But I wanted to play one uh, quick clip here. I asked him for his take on the matchup and who he's picking to win tonight. Colorado team that all season long, the metrics have liked them better than what the body of work suggested a human should should appreciate, which is obvious in the numbers. 25th in the net, 26th at Ken Palm. Strength of record, which is less of um, you know, predictive stuff and more of just like what have you accomplished, is you know, in the mid-30s. Still, um, this is a, a quality basketball team, no matter how you cut it. They, they've got a great coach. They do have a probable lottery pick in Cody Williams, but they've got other guys. I mean, he's only their third leading scorer, so he's their best NBA prospect, but he's not their best player. It's a good team that was sort of off the national radar for much of the season, in part because of, uh, you know, they play out West. And secondly, there's not a much attention on the Pac-12 because outside of Arizona and Washington State, there wasn't that much quality in that league. They got lucky to get four bids at the end of the day. So uh, Colorado, I believe, is a favorite in this game. That would be based largely on computer numbers. Again, the predictive metrics really like the Buffaloes. 
but I'll take I'm taking Boise State uh, in this game. I don't know if I'm doing that with my head or my heart, but I always like it when programs have an opportunity to do things that you know have never been done before or that can change a narrative. And I, I think Boise State's got a clear opportunity to do that in, in this one. It, it, it's, a, it's a tight spread for a reason, but I, I, I think Boise State's been the better team basically all season, and I'm going to respect that in this, uh, this one-game situation. There you go. Uh, Gary Parrish, Johnny, at least somebody taking Boise State tonight. He's good. I like Gary Parrish. Love the CBS. We're CBS affiliates at KTIK, so I appreciate you reaching out to – to our kind of family members there, BJ. Boise State's been the better team this season, but I don't know if they're the better team today. Colorado's playing really well, BJ. I had a chance to watch several games. Uh, for I, I didn't see Colorado play until end of the season, conference tournament mainly. And they were really impressive in the conference tournament against Utah, against Washington State, even in the loss to a desperate Oregon team. They were good there too, so... I don't know if 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 Boise State has had the better team. They've been the better team for the, the entire body of work. Sure, uh, I just don't know. And that you you throw all that stuff out in March too. And I know Gary Parrish is well aware of that as well. But both teams again, I go back to it. Coin flip. I don't even. I don't know if I've made a prediction. I don't know if I've even filled this part of my bracket out yet. I have no idea where this thing's going to go tonight, BJ. I really don't. But uh, the the styles you look. Uh, Tad and Leon, like they, they, they have the same philosophies to me. When I look at what they're both good at, BJ, they yeah. both shoot the three well. The three pointer is a major piece of what they do offensively, and defensively, a major piece is defending the three pointer. And I look at both seasons and the bodies of work. Colorado was as good, maybe even better, at Boise State in those categories this year. I know they were in three point shooting. Colorado is one of the best three point shooting teams in America. So Boise state really needs to hope that their defense of the three point of the three point shot wins that matchup of Colorado's ability to shoot it. If Colorado comes and they're hitting 40 plus percent of their threes, BJ, then Boise state is going to have to hit over 40% of its threes. And wow. Uh, it's tough to ask that for both teams, you know? Again, the full interview with Gary Parrish, it's about 20 minutes. He was a great interview talking about the Mountain West getting snubbed and Leon Rice and uh, the, even the, the criticism that he gets from some in Boise and just the future of Boise State's program. Great wide-ranging uh, conversation. You can hear that coming up at noon Mountain Time on a special 90-minute edition of the Lithia Florida Boise pregame show. So come back around noon. We'll have that full interview and a lot of other great stuff as well. Johnny, I wanted to give uh, some props to the walk-ons, to the red shirts. You know, something that Leon Rice does that is pretty cool at the NCAA tournament is they use a good chunk of their open practice time to let the walk-ons have their moment. And uh, there's Sam Winter hitting a three. Uh, they basically uh, they divide the teams up. So even the, the even the scholarship players are rooting for those guys, and then there's push-ups involved at the end. Um, but uh, you only get 40 minutes of an open practice. We were there. We saw the one last year in Portland. I've been in uh, Sa uh, Portland a couple years ago, Sacramento. Um, Leon Rice, given the guys that probably won't see the floor tonight, a chance for their March Madness moment last night and for, uh, yesterday in front of some fans, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, look at those. You know, that's that's uh, that's Ukbo, right? Number ten there, BJ. Yep. That yep. Yeah, that guy's built for his. You age. had uh, Chris Chris Lockett, Alex Martin, and uh, who was the third player over there? Uh, um, Ugbo, I uh, can't see over on the other side of the court. Oh, Sam Winter, and then you had uh, Vince Berenger. There's Cade Rice backing down, getting a foul call on Chris Lockett there. And again, the scholarship players are over there on the sides cheering because they had uh, they drafted the teams. They had some, uh, uh, you know, involved uh, you know, push-ups and stuff. Look at Vince Berenger with the range. Look how excited the teammates are, Coach Rice, for him there. Um, they, again, they probably won't see the floor tonight, Johnny. Obviously, the red shirts won't for sure. Uh, but uh, pretty cool for these guys to get a taste of March Madness. Is Nate Lowry officiating there? Did I just see a whistle in Lowry? No, that's uh, Matt Charles. The uh, that's Matt Thank Charles. You. The uh, Thank you. But Max Teams, one of the uh, graduate assistants, this was his March moment too, is getting out there refereeing this game. Uh, but uh, Vince Berenger hitting some shots. You see Alex Martin, Cam Martin's brother there, Chris Lockett. Folks hoping to see him on a real March Madness floor next year. Uh, there, a nice pass there to Alex Martin for the layup. Uh, they got into it, came down to the final possession of the game, Johnny. But uh, 
this is kind of what March Madness is all about, right? Just these guys, you know, the experience, a once in a lifetime experience for a lot of these guys. I thought that was a foul there. Mike Burns right here telling me, uh, no, that's a perfectly clear play. Is I think I turned it. There you go. I Mike agree Burns with is like. <laughs> Looked like a hook to me, but uh, this is what March Madness is all about, man. These are lifetime memories for some of these guys. Yeah, and, and think about this. Uh, and, and I've been a part of travel parties with teams as a broadcaster, and I know how much time the travel party spends together, not just the players and coaches, but the trainers, administrators, support staff. Uh, in many cases, a lot of parents, BJ, will be at just about every single road trip so parents are involved, and and this is kind of a, you know, I don't know if an end of the year party, but they they know they're they're running out of these opportunities together. So it's nice for everybody to to at least kind of come together and have some fun one last time in a perfect setting. This is what every team wants to do. They want to have these practices at the NCAA tournament. So it's cool that you know for the third year in a row, Boise State gets to do cool stuff like this. And uh, this program, BJ everything stays intact like we think it will is in really really good shape there's uh, emmanuel ugbo with the nice uh, layup there this was the last possession of the game i believe right here uh they needed a, they needed a score oh sam no no first sam winter had nice look at a little nice drive there and wouldn't that be the Winter's dream that uh, boise state's up and that boise state's up enough in this game tonight that they can get those guys in there uh sam winter by the way was feeling it look at this three teammates Winter's were coming. loving it sam winter <laughs> winter is coming they were loving it and uh, then I think this was the final possession of the game uh, coming up. He, by the way, he had a heat check. He tried to go twice in a row. I don't think the second one went there. No, but uh, spring is uh, here. The, the uh, I believe it was the blue, this was the final possession. The blue team won the game, and uh, the shot here missed. And then I think that uh, that that would wrap it up. But uh, pretty cool and uh, pretty cool uh, opportunity for those guys to uh, to get a chance. There's the celebration. Again, hopefully the first of uh, numerous celebrations on that court here in the next 24 hours, and even on the day before the game, making those guys do some push-ups over there, Johnny. Yeah, Pretty again, cool. it's cool that they get to do stuff like that and March Madness. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. And again, um, th th those guys go through a lot from, you know, what, October until March? I mean, you're with those yeah. guys every single day and the travel and the buses and the hotels and the checking in and out and the commercial flights, like, you know, you spend a lot of time together. So uh, glad for them to have that moment. And, yeah, it would be great if some of those guys can check in tonight. Actually, it would be great on one. If they're losing by so ever many points, I don't know if Leon empties the bench there, but if they're winning by however many points, I yeah. think he does. So. You got to give – I mean, if you are losing, you don't want to think about it, but you need to give Max Rice probably a final chance to check out for uh, for those Boise That's State fans. That's going to be emotional, too. Um, and Leon Rice said in the press conference yesterday that keeps him up at night, just thinking about the yeah. career of Max Rice ending at some point here uh, in the near future. Let's take a quick 90-second timeout. Speaking of partying and having fun yesterday, Johnny, Leon Rice on the drum set. Uh, we got some other cool uh, things to get to as well. Quick 90-second break. We are under 10 hours from tip-off, rolling along here on Bronco Nation News. Back in 90 seconds, don't go anywhere. All Bronco Nation news broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU. Com. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bowsher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BowsherRealEstate.com.
All right, Johnny, the Broncos in their third straight trip to the uh, NCAA tournament. We all remember how the last two games went, but I was doing some research, some stats, and kind of looking through those games because Boise State's talked a lot about wanting to start fast. And I don't know if you've uh, you know, read my story yet on BroncoNationNews.com uh, previewing this game or not, but uh, Johnny, the last two games, Memphis and uh, Northwestern, Boise State has not led, not even yeah. for one second in the last two NCAA tournament games. They've fallen behind early in both games, tried to recover in the Memphis game. They got down by 19 two years ago bat at halftime, battled back, actually cut it to five with about three minutes to go and, and just couldn't okay. quite get over the hump against yeah. Northwestern. They they fell behind 20 to 10, I think it was, to Northwestern. Uh, battled back, actually tied the game 40-40 on a Max Rice three in transition uh, early in the second half. Um, got it to two a couple times in the second half, but never had the lead against Northwestern. So you're talking two games in a row in the tournament where not even 1-0, not even 2-0, not even 3-2, to two, not even for a second as Boise State held the lead at all at any point in the game. Their last lead, Johnny, came in this arena, UD Arena, in 2015 with about 45 seconds to go when they were up one. Everybody mm -hmm. remembers that finish where they were up nine with about four minutes to go. Blew that. Uh, Dayton scored with about 30 seconds left on a three. The no call and the Derek Marks foul. I hate to bring that up, but that was the last time, literally almost a decade ago, that Boise State has had the lead in an NCAA tournament game. So I think uh, one of my keys tonight, one of my biggest keys, get a lead at some point, yeah. get some confidence, and uh, just get off to a better start so you're not playing from behind the whole game. There's a different mentality when you have the lead than when you don't, obviously. Um, you have to learn how to keep it, to protect it. Obviously, you coach, you play differently when you have a lead, depending on what the lead is, obviously. But yeah, Boise State has yet to be in that mentality in the, what, what are we going to call it, the Rice-Dagenhart era. You know, uh, they, they haven't had a lead in the tournament. You know, it'd be nice if they can get off to a nice start. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to sit there, though, BJ, off for the second media timeout and if they're trailing by three points and they haven't led yet and say, uh Oh, I don't know here at that point, I'll still, it'll still be okay with me. It's not a end of the world type of thing, but it would be nice BJ for me, the second half, you yep. know, have a lead in the second half play with these guys and um, play your game. And, you know, you know, I don't know if you need Colorado to somewhat lay an egg or not. I think if Boise state plays its best game, Colorado is one of the teams in this tournament that Boise State can beat if they play their best game. There might be teams in this tournament, sadly, Boise State could run into. They can play their best game, but that team's just going to be that much better. Colorado isn't that for me, BJ. Boise State plays its best game. I think that they can win this thing. Colorado, rightfully so, was saying probably the, the exact same thing. This is a terrific matchup. Like I said before, both teams shoot the three well. Both teams defend the three well. BJ, three well. BJ, look at the rebounding numbers. They're like dead even on rebounds per game. And yep. Boise State prides itself on owning the glass. Well, so does Colorado. And statistically, Colorado's just a little bit better at it than Boise. Remember, what presser was it, BJ, when Leon said, you know, the tournament's all about the draw? And Leon goes back to the Gonzaga days. So Leon's been in this tournament like yep. 20 plus times, man. He's seen everything in this thing. And Leon said, sometimes, you know, we've had teams where say our strength is rebounding. And if we happen to play a team whose strength is also rebounding, then all of a sudden our strength isn't as strong because they're good at it too. You know, when I saw this matchup and I started doing some research, I thought about Leon mentioning that. And I thought, ooh. You know, and, and for, same goes for Colorado. Like our strength, the other, the opponent, that's their strength too. Styles make fights, like I always say, BJ. And stylistically, this thing matches up tonight. Alexander saying, How does everybody feel about the game? Nervous, excited, unsure, pumped. Uh, and then uh, Todd says, All of the above. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Matt's asking about the uh, Diet Coke and not Diet Dr. Pepper today. Johnny, you know, the one nice thing about these tournaments is the uh, media hospitality area. Uh, plenty of free soda, plenty of free snacks. And I took a couple Diet Cokes back with me uh, to the. I don't know if I should admit that or not, but uh, you do, BJ. Stole yes. a couple Diet Cokes from the uh, media hospitality room last I night on, on the way back. My backpack, you know, a lot of backpacks. If people don't know me, I, I carry a backpack everywhere I go. But I have these, 
you know, those drink, uh, uh, compartments on the yes. side of the backpack. Every yes. time I'm at a media event, BJ, whether I'm coming or going, wherever, if my two things are empty on my backpack, I go there and I grab a couple of sodas and I just load up. I'll need yep. them whatever. And if I want to get real greedy, I'll take another one and actually put it in a zipper part of the backpack. And if we're lucky enough to find like M and M's, stickers, oh. that type of stuff. I mean, if they're if that's still around, you always, even if you're going to eat it then or 20 minutes later. You take a couple. It's why a lot of media members, BJ, you know, aren't aren't exactly uh, looking like Jack Lalane in their later days. <laughs> I was man. actually thinking about that yesterday as I was eating probably my third little thing of Chips Ahoy. Uh, that I was like, yeah, this is this is well, not helping. Uh, this is always junk food too. Not that I'm complaining, but they just yeah. get media members like it's always junk food. Like, <laughs> oh man, yeah. The, the Chips Ahoy weren't enough. They also had Oreos. You could choose yeah. either one. You know, <laughs> it's like or, I'm an Oreo guy for sure. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that is why I have the Diet Coke here. Um, when Omar score, doesn't score at least 15, Boise State loses, so they need to get, wants to see Omar get to – uh wait for that matchup with Lumpkin, BJ. My kid's watching in Florida. He says, not on your lean feast diet, Dad. Come on. So, uh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, boys. I'll get back to that next week, guys. Calm down a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, folks are excited. Uh, Bronco wants to know, Johnny, if you have a court date today. You're looking nice there. No, I just uh, – no, I got a uh... – <laughs> Uh, Johnny, you mentioned uh, having fun. What'd you make? Uh, you know, yesterday about halfway through the uh, practice, the band director, band director of the Blue Thunder marching band, comes over to me and uh, turns out he's a BNN, that loyal BNN subscriber and reader, and had a, was, enjoyed talking to him and meeting him. And he said, uh, "Now I heard from a couple of the coaches that Coach Rice actually can play the drums." And I said, that is true. He can. Yeah, he, he's kind of messed around with it a little bit before. He goes, he goes. well, some of the coaches were telling me I should get him to come uh, play over with the group here. Do you think he would do that? And I said, you know what? Like at the end, when, when you know, at the end of practice, I bet you he might. You, you should go for that. So uh, Coach Rice was standing kind of near him. He went over to him. I said, I hear you're the next Ringo star, uh, you know, on the drum set or whatever. Uh, and he said, uh, would you, you know, what do you think about coming over and playing? And uh, he said, at the end of practice, I will definitely do that. There was still some skepticism whether or not he actually would. And then sure enough, right as practice ends, here comes Coach Rice. Now, this some of this he hadn't seen the light of day yet. He starts with a little solo. Leon Rice, the solo on the drum set here. What do you think, John? He's feeling it now. It took him a second to find his rhythm, but the rhythm has been found, BJ. And now he's rocking out like he used to. Talking Kennewick, Washington, over at uh, Bench Warmer's Pub and Grill on a Friday night. Yeah, I've heard that before. Now, he's telling everybody to join in, but he didn't really give them a song or a chance or how to do it, so they're all kind of wondering. Then they wanted to do the fight song, but he started playing way too slow of a beat for the fight song here, so they hadn't practiced any of this. But uh, he got the beat going again. They were able to kind of start the fight song uh, a little bit slower paced than usual here. But uh, Leon Rice playing the drums with the... Uh, with the band there and you had all the people running over in the cameras all the players were watching i'm sure this you hope this isn't it johnny but i could very easily see this coming up on the uh, one shining moment video at the end of the year yeah this is cool bj leon's a talented dude that's awesome man i i and i i am not gifted when it comes to musical instruments bj everybody else in my family seems to be but i did not get that leon certainly has that it's good to see i hope he wins tonight man uh, you know he's having fun he's loving this opportunity i hope he gets a win now uh He was pretty pumped up about it, too, there after it was over. Pumping his fist, thanking everybody. Uh, somebody says here they were watching the video waiting for Mike Burns to overshadow with a guitar solo. Oh, that would be sweet. That's what <laughs> we need. Maybe, maybe next round, maybe in indie, right? You can get Burns a bass guitar or something, and he can rock bass on the fight song, Leon on the drums. I mean, does Durie have a voice? Ah, can we get Tim Durie to sing? Maybe Red. Maybe most can sing. <laughs> Speaking of uh, one shining moment, Johnny, did you see my video yesterday? Uh, which I'm one? I'm about to play it here, but uh, RJ Keen came back as a correspondent for BNN, and he asked some of his teammates if they know 
the name of the song, One Shining Moment, that plays at the end. And yeah. uh, not everybody knows. Here's what happened. This is a hard question, probably the hardest one on the list. What's the song that plays after the national championship game? I'm not sure. It's, either. it's like the most famous song. I don't know the name of it. All right, Omar, what's the final song they play after the national championship game? What's that called? I don't know. You can't sing it? But you know, like, there's a song that plays? Yeah. Do you know the song, Ugbo? I don't. What's the, what's the, I really don't know the song. We, I was like, we are the champions. <laughs> <laughs> the video highlight we had that we watch a thousand times. Oh, you know what, you know what that's called? Uh, no, nah, it's by Luther Vandross, though. Ain't it? Yeah. I, bro, I, I don't. I, After the national championship game, a song gets played. What's that song called? One Shining Moment. Correct. Can you sing it for me? No. Nah. Yeah. Ball is tipped. There we go. <laughs> uh -uh. No, it's one shiny moment. It's one shining moment. Yeah. <laughs> one shiny moment. Okay. Can you sing it for us? One shining moment. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he, they actually kind of uh, – I, I feel bad for Emmanuel Ugbo because they kind of they, they kind of uh, hung him out to dry there. They started – some other players started telling him it was the We Are the Champions song, so then he just started okay. singing it. And uh, they go, you know how it starts, we – and then he, he just went with it. And it was – how many times – I mean, Emmanuel Ugbo has been overseas playing basketball and stuff. He probably hasn't seen one no, show. No, he, he doesn't. Uh, and, and you don't continue to watch. After the game ends, a lot of people – they go about the rest of their night, right? I mean, they're not going to stick around for one shining moment. Really, that's the the P1s, if you will, kind of the diehards. Or if yep. your team went far, you want to see what clip or so you know someone in the tournament, all that stuff. I don't, BJ, I, can, I don't remember the last time I sat there and said, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna sit, stay here on my couch for one shining moment. I don't remember the last time I've seen it. but oh, I, I think I, most people watch it. You want to see where your team makes their appearance. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, I, I think people watch that to to see. Uh, Ask the viewers here. I mean, do you guys uh, love, in the comments? Do you guys watch One Shining Moment every year? Derek says, "Love Omar, knowing it was Vandross, though uh, he gets he gets some points. He did know uh, a little yeah. bit that it was, uh, and that was actually a pretty cool thing they did, Johnny, at the selection show on Sunday. They actually did put a special One Shining Moment together of just Boise State highlights from this season, That's and really that was cool. pretty cool. I mean, when you hear the doom 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 and then the song starts and it's i mean yeah. there's nothing better man march madness and uh this is not true my kid says i watch it every year and sing that is not true i do not oh, sing wow. for one shining moment it's your go, kids. Back the, go back to the pool or something my kids are on their, their last day in florida and uh, they're sitting there watching the show i appreciate it russ says one shining moment is a must watch come on okay yeah uh, yeah uh, let's see here, John. We've got a couple more things to get to until we uh, run out of time here. I do want to get our uh, one final uh, sponsor block in here, thanking our sponsors. Lithia Ford of Boise. Check them out, lithiafordboise.com. You can view their full inventory of vehicles. Again, they got five NIL deals with Boise State student athletes rocking their vehicles. You can too. The Reigns family, happy uh, customers at Lithia Ford of Boise. So check them out, view their full inventory of vehicles. They're, uh, they're back, Johnny, for the hole-in-one this year for the golf tournament as well. So maybe you can upgrade your ride with a hole-in-one thanks to our friends at Lithia Ford of Boise. Taco Bell, we appreciate SON Management Group, Nicolas and family for their support. They are hiring, so if you want free food while you work and half your wages the very next day after your shift, check out TacoBellWorks.com. And Johnny, these student-athletes that you're seeing here at Boise State, the student-athlete scholarships for the men's and women's basketball team are paid for by Taco Bell and the SON Management Group. They have committed uh, six figures, over hundreds of thousands of dollars to the endowed scholarships at Boise State for the student-athlete scholarships for the men's and women's basketball team. And by the way, the women's team is in the NIT tonight. Good luck to them. Unfortunately, that game is at the exact same time as the men's game, 7 o'clock uh, against Montana. But uh, good luck to the women tonight. And again, thank you to... 
Taco Bell. You ever thought about getting into the trucking industry? Transportation Compliance Service can help you out. Transcomservice.com. All the permits, overweight DOT permits, everything you need to get out there towing that first load. Let the folks at Transportation Compliance Service help you out. Those that try to do it themselves, over 75% of them end up screwing up and going out of business. So let the pros handle it. It's a uh, company based in the Treasure Valley. It's a national company. and They signed like Jason Witten up for an RV recently. So check them out at uh, Transportation Compliance Service. And again, we appreciate the blue and orange store as well, the blue and orange store.com free shipping, any order over a $40. When Boise state gets to the uh, sweet 16 here in about five days, Johnny, they'll have the sweet 16 shirts there at the blue and orange store, the blue and orange store.com second floor of the Boise town square mall there next to pro image, or again, online free shipping over uh, any order over $40 at the blue and orange store.com. And I may need some of this today. I wish I had brought some with me. Bronco Brew Coffee. Going to be a long day here on the East Coast. The game not starting till 9-10. BroncoBrew.coffee. Check them out. Supporting Boise State University Athletics with every sip. And again, you go on the website, you get fresh roasted order coffee. In many instances, within 24 hours, the coffee is at your doorstep in the Treasure Valley. And uh, you can pick the athlete online that you want to donate the money to. And uh, Boise State uh, benefits from it as well. So check them out. Bronco Brew dot coffee johnny uh oh and nine in the ncaa tournament we've talked about this oh and four under leon rice but leon rice went out of his way yesterday to say hey this team has never lost a game in the ncaa tournament this group this collection of players they're not thinking about that they they you know they have not lost a game some of the players have but this group of players is zero and zero in the ncaa tournament and that's how they're looking at it and they're not really thinking about the losses but I do know, and, and Chibuzo Abo even said it, like that has been the goal the entire season, going back to last summer. When Cam Martin committed to Boise State, he flat out told me during the commitment interview um, that he knows Boise State's 0-9 and, and it's about to be 1-9. and Like, uh, he, you know, that, that has been the rallying cry for this team. So the fact that all year that was the goal and here they are with a chance to do right. that, um, you know, what, what, what do you make just uh, about this team? And we've, you know, trying to, trying to get that monkey off the back. And as Abo said it, whether it's for this weekend, whether it's for next year, Abo said, once you get that monkey off the back, it, it'll give them a ton of momentum moving forward. So, uh, yeah. just, just what do you make of the chance at history and how big it would be for Boise state to get it done tonight? BJ, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick the winner of tonight's game to beat Florida on Friday. I think that momentum those butterflies, whatever jitters, whatever the, oh, well, this is the NCAA tournament. We really have to play well now. That, whoever wins this game, that's why you've seen such success from teams in the first four, BJ. There's always a team that ends up going on. And in many cases, you'll see a team from the first four end up going to the next weekend and play in the Sweet 16. Now, I said, I, I hope it doesn't come to this. I hope Boise State plays well and 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 they don't have to have a moment. But if I'm if I'm Max Rice, BJ, um, and I say this for Max because we've seen it before. We've seen Max Rice take over a basketball game multiple occasions. And sometimes it's in the biggest moments of the season. San Diego State last year. They probably don't make the tournament if Max doesn't have that takeover. This year, New Mexico, you know, Max took a little bit of fuel from the media and turned it into this huge landfill fire, BJ, and he took it to the New Mexico Lobos. I think they were double-digit dogs in that game, and Boise State won outright. <clears throat> I hope it doesn't have to come to this, but if I'm Max, I'm ready. Uh, I'm not going out in Dayton. And, and if I have to take this game over in front of the college basketball world tonight, everybody's watching this game, then I'm going to do it. You know, and I'm listening, BJ. I'm listening to DMX party up. I got it in my headphones. I'm just that. Y'all go me. I'm just constantly it's pumping me up, BJ. I'm kicking the door down. I'm taking the gloves off. No holds barred. No weapons banned. I'm going hunting. And, and, and if it comes down to that, I hope Max Rice has been able to do what he's done before. I don't care who his dad is. I just have seen this guy take over games when the season is on the line. If that has to happen tonight, I hope Max is ready, willing, and able to get it done. Hopefully it doesn't, though, and this team can play as it typically does as a unit real well, and they can beat Colorado, BJ. Uh, Brent says, somebody tell Max Rice he shoots too much and that his shooting percentage sucks. Right, Max. Max has that Michael Jordan last dance thing, right? If you if you 
piss him off, whatever. And maybe you could justify like, hey, what I said wasn't even incorrect, Max. Hey, I, I, I wasn't offensive, Max. I was just typing down a stat. Hey, hey, it doesn't matter to Max. Max will use that to his advantage. And he did that in New Mexico. It kind of flipped the season at that point. BJ, they were double-digit dogs that game, weren't they? Or nine and a half in Albuquerque? Yep, and, ten and a half. Yep. Yeah, ten and a half point. Point to dogs in the Max Rice takeover. Um, yeah, be ready. And uh, if it comes to that, I'm confident that, that, that Max can have a great game. Hopefully it doesn't, though, like I've said a million times. And they just play their ball, and Max can get his typical numbers, and Tyson Dagenhart leads the team in scoring like he has this season, and all that stuff. Let's go. I know you're a big trivia guy, Johnny. I want to go one more trivia question from uh, RJ Keen here. Dure, who's the only coach to win the NCAA tournament championship and NBA title? First of all, Johnny, do you know who it is before I continue this? Of course. Of okay. Course. All right. All right. Of course. Um, the last coach and the only coach to win an NBA title and a national championship in Division I. Uh, Steve Kerr? Oh, what? No. <laughs> Can I get an era? I, I want to give you a hint, but I feel like that would give it away too much. Probably will. We played against them before. I should know this. This is not hard. What's the question? So to win an NCAA title and an NBA title. Oh. Uh... We played him in the last two years. He was on a bench. I'm gonna feel really bad when I get when I don't get this. I don't know who is it. He sat on the bench in an NCAA tournament game that we faced. <laughs> A team. Oh, yeah, of course. Larry Brown. Thank you. Yeah. She got that too quick. I should have known that. <laughs> Larry Brown. You knew that, Johnny, right? Of course. And who's the only college coach to win a title at two different colleges? That was one he asked too. Do you know that? Um, only only coach to win a national championship at two different schools. NCAA tournament at two different schools. That would be Rick Patino. It is. Yep. That is uh that is uh, Rick Pitino. So there, the whole you're clip. Not, you're was, not busting me, man. You're, you're be surprised me. how many. Uh, you know, he asked some great questions. Name the last, you know, fifteen seeds to beat two seeds. That's good. Uh, you know, he named like three teams from a Final Four, and you had to pick the fourth team. Uh, he showed players some logos on his phone of schools in the tournament. Can you name the t the school? I like that. Um, it was it was pretty funny. So we'll play the full uh, the full clip of all the interviews. We'll debut that on the uh, pregame show, which is, again is coming up at noon. Uh, mountain time. We got a couple minutes left, Johnny. Uh, you, who's your X factor? Who, you mentioned Max Rice needing to have a big game, but who's your uh, X factor tonight? And, and again, I don't know if Max needs to have a big game, but if the world needs Max to have a big game, I hope Max can have a big game, right? Um, who needs to have a big game? I mean, I heard Bob talk a lot about Roddy Anderson yesterday, and I thought Beeler was spot on with that. Roddy has to play well. I'll throw that. Uh, what about what about Cam Martin? It feels like when Cam Martin gets his run, you know, he plays about seven, eight minutes a half. And if he's passing, if he's rebounding, um, working the glass, like I said, maybe hitting a couple of bunnies inside, I'll say Cam Martin. It feels like, especially with his passing, if, if, if he's getting a couple of assists here and there, I mean, Cam Martin, if he has a good game tonight, maybe that'll help. All right, I want to play one final bite on the way out here, from, and then I'll get your final thoughts from Gary Parrish. Uh, again, the full interview with Gary Parrish, 20 minutes coming up on uh, at noon Mountain Time on the uh, pregame show. But uh, one more Gary Parrish thought on Boise State. Always impressed anytime somebody does something that has never been done at a school that's been doing something for a long time. So Leon deserves a lot of credit um, You know, to, to take this program to the NCAA tournament three straight years is obviously unprecedented. And now I don't have to tell you or anybody watching what the next step is, right? Go win a game. You'd never want that bullet point being connected to you. So um, I, I'm hopeful that that they can end all of that stuff uh, this week and, and record an NCAA tournament uh, victory. But the truth is they shouldn't be playing in this game. And I'll just give you some, and I'm, 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 I know I'm preaching to the choir here, given the audience, but I just, I looked at this this, this morning. Because I knew I'd be talking to you. Boise State, 26 in the net, 9-9 nine and nine in the first two quadrants, six quadrant one wins. They do have that one quadrant three loss, but it's only one quadrant three loss. Now, look at Michigan State, which is safely in the field. 
nine and 14 in the first two quadrants with only three quadrant one wins. So Boise State is five games better than Michigan State in the first two quadrants, has twice as many quadrant one wins as Michigan State. And the only negative thing that works in Michigan State's favor is Michigan State has no quadrant three losses and, and Boise State has one. One quadrant three loss should not make up the difference between being five games below 500 in the first two quadrants and even in the first two quadrants or for having six quadrant one wins instead of three. There is no way to intelligently look at Boise State's body of work and Michigan State's body of work and conclude that Michigan State's is better than Boise State. You cannot and, do that. Yeah, but you could say but the that, same for Dayton. You could say the same for FAU or uh, yeah. in and by that that quadrant three loss, by the way, is the UNLV team that I think is like one spot away from being quadrant two in the net as well. There you go. That's right. So they 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 had a real disservice done to them here. This is not right. The committee messed this up. But if you're Leon or a Boise State, you you know you can keep saying that. But unless you win this game tonight, that's the problem. Nobody will believe you. Your thoughts on that, Johnny? I like Gary Parrish, man. I think he's spot on and. Uh... Boise State had a better resume than a lot of those teams. For me, the team that stood out the most was FAU, though. I just can't find the path to, oh, FAU's an 8, and Boise State is a 10. That separation, I just can't find it. Non-con, con, con post, I just I, statistic, data, ranking numbers, and you follow that more than me, but FAU on the 8 line really surprised me. Um, what they're getting Michigan Michigan State respect. I mean, they went to the Final Four last year, so they're. I mean, I mean, uh, really. I mean, Michigan State. I mean, it's just tough. The committee members they probably get in there and they love Tom Izzo, and they also know that Tom Izzo brings it to this tournament. He usually gets out of the first round, you know. And and Michigan State is a draw. People want to watch true TV or when Michigan State is playing, and that stuff supposedly isn't part of. The equation is not in the crock pot, but yet every year people put that ingredients into the committee crock pot and those teams get seeds. But yeah, I thought Parrish was spot on, man. Good stuff. Okay, your, final, your, your final thoughts, Johnny, uh, just, just Boise state an opportunity in history tonight. I've, I, uh, you know, I did not feel good about the New Mexico game. I, I made that point known publicly. I did not think that was a good matchup. I just had a bad yeah. feeling about that game. I don't necessarily know if I love the matchup in terms of like the player for player matchup tonight, but I, I actually feel pretty good about the game tonight. I don't know why. I just I have this vision in my head, and I have all year. Max Rice. I just don't. It just wouldn't feel right for Max Rice to walk off the floor in Dayton tonight, losing uh, again in the NCAA tournament for the third time. So maybe I'm going with my heart. Maybe I'm a home or whatever you want to call it. I just have a weird feeling. Boise, I, I just feel pretty good that Boise State's going to be going to extend this thing, and this is not how it ends for for Max. It's just like I said, it's such a coin flip for me. I see this game going so many different ways. One matchup we didn't look, we didn't talk about, but I wanted to mention real quick: Omar versus the Lumpkin guy. You know, Lumpkin's Lampkin. eleven. Lampkin. Lampkin, sorry, Lamp Lampkin. Yep, Eddie Lampkin, six eleven, three hundred, and he's got good hands and feet, and he moves well. And if Omar, I think Omar can get the best of him, though, with his skill set. I think it might be harder for, for, for Lampkin to defend Omar than it is for Omar to defend him. So I want to keep an eye on that matchup. I think it's going to be close, BJ. By the end of the final media timeout, the under four-minute mark, I still don't think we're going to know who's going to win this game. Wow. Um, if they do win, BJ, man, what a party that's going to be on a Wednesday night in Boise, Idaho. Festive, your pregame show, your postgame show will get – 5,000 views. It'll be a huge night. And if not, there's going to be a lot of people, you know, complaining about it. Yep. About this draw. And, you know, it sucks to lose to a team like Colorado. That's fine, but it shouldn't have been in Dayton and, and you'll get the disrespect stuff and it'll, that'll be tough. What uh, what do we got coming up today? Three hours, Idaho sports talk, three to six, getting you ready. Yeah, yeah we got, we're talking to a CU uh, beat writer. So we're going to dive in even more about Colorado and find out what they're doing. Obviously Bob Beeler, we love bringing the play-by-play -play broadcaster of this game on our show on game day to give us kind of four things to, to watch for, to pay attention for. So we'll have Beeler there as well. And then kind of our own pseudo pregame show, right, PJ? Getting everybody ready. We're off at 6. This game tips a little after 7. So uh, 
And I'll get to KTIK Sports Radio. The ticket. We'll we'll have wall to wall coverage on this sucker. And I know you guys have the uh, you guys have the app or the uh, bracket challenge as well. Folks can go on there and sign up KTIK.com for the bracket challenge and uh, jump in there. So again, here's the plan. Uh, in about two hours at noon Mountain Time, uh, I'll, I'll help fill the gap before Idaho Sports Talk starts. We got a 90 minute, maybe even two hours mega show. We got Gary Parrish. I got Spiro Didis, the play by play guy for the game tonight on True TV. Uh, I got uh, Abe Jackson joining me live. Jeremiah Dickey, Cody Gogler, both expected to stop by the lobby. We'll be doing a live show from the team hotel at the Marriott. And who knows who's going to walk by where we have a lot of fun. Again, that'll be at noon Mountain Time. So come back in about two hours and uh, we'll have uh, a full uh, early edition of the uh, Lithia Florida Boise pregame show, Facebook. Uh, YouTube, X, wherever else you've been watching this show. Come back at noon Mountain Time. We'll have you covered with the pregame show. Really looking forward to that. Going to be a lot of fun with cutting up some audio and things from Coach Rice yesterday and his relationship with Tad Boyle. And then 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, Johnny and Prado will have you covered. Then tip off at 7. And then obviously the postgame show is going to be uh, crazy as well. So appreciate you guys. I'm going to get ready and head over to the team hotel. We'll talk to you in two hours. Uh, and then we'll be listening 3 o'clock uh, Mountain Time with Johnny and Prado over on KTIK. Uh, not many better days, uh, Johnny. Fun days, yeah, uh, waking man. up, having your team that you cover, your team that you root for, who, whatever it may be, playing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, it's pretty cool. So hopefully the, the time goes fast. Enjoy it, everybody, and we'll talk to you in two hours back at noon Mountain Time for the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show. Johnny, appreciate it. Thanks to all of you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bronco Nation News Live at bronconationnews.com.